hello students hello uh, scholars this lecture actually is a very common lecture useful lecture for all the uh, students of ug level pg level maybe phd level or those faculty members who are pursuing phd or doing some research work wherein they are required to write some research paper whenever we talk about research paper sometimes we find that how to write that research paper is a difficult task i don't believe really that's a difficult task if you understand the different stages and different components of a research paper and what is expected to be produced what is expected to be presented in each component of the research paper if we understand i tell you dear students and dear scholars writing a research paper is very very simple and easy task if you see the research paper or research article what do you mean by research paper research paper is something wherein we take one topic the topic may be uh, the topic may be from any subject any research area any any area of interest any research interest any topic you take by your choice by your research interest by your research area by your subject area whichever topic you want to select choose a topic and after choosing and selecting a topic means we can discuss separately about how to choose the topic that is another aspect but here in this lecture we are more interested to discuss about how to write the research paper so if you divide any research paper we take a topic and over that topic how do we write that paper how do we present that paper how do we complete writing that particular research paper before that we need to understand which are the main components in any research paper general purpose component general components and the generalized components are abstract in all the research paper there will be an abstract then introduction the related research method results and discussion conclusions and references so one by one we will separately discuss let me tell you abstract and conclusions actually abstract and conclusions are the components of research papers which we can write at the end of paper that would be better one that would be the better option otherwise let us understand what is expected to be there in the abstract abstract sometimes we call it as hypothesis also what do we mean by hypothesis we make an hypothesis in any research approach we make an hypothesis we make a hypothesis and what do we do that we try to prove that hypothesis so what is there inside hypothesis what is there inside abstract in abstract we take a topic and what do we do what do we plan to do we want to implement this what do we want to implement how do we want to implement why do we want to implement what we are going to achieve how much improvement we are going to achieve in comparison with already existing researchers who have done some research work small contribution in the same topic because when we talk about research others must or might have done something over that topic and what we do in the abstract what others have done is there any improvement we are going to achieve that also we include in the abstract so what do we write in abstract in abstract we include what we are going to do how we are going to do how much improvement we are going to get and what is the conclusion we are going to draw out of our research paper these things are very precisely briefly written inside the abstract normally that is a general purpose that is a that is a single paragraph uh, content for the abstract then we go to introduction what is introduction introduction is a general purpose theory when we are writing about any topic may be deep learning or uh, a biometrics using deep learning i am just taking one example what do we do what about biometric what are the roles and applications of biometric how does deep learning play role in biometrics what are different methods and what are different contributions which have been researched upon with general purpose overview we present in overview general purpose theory we try to produce in the introduction and that too you can refer so many papers and you can prepare the introduction it is not required to write the introduction by your own you can read so many papers and the references what do we mean by references what others have done we include their contributions in a suitable style maybe the author's name the title name the, the journal name where it was published the volume name the issue number then page number then year so these things are included in the reference and we cite the reference in the introduction or wherever we are using the references so what was explained in that particular paper we include 
by citing there. For example, suppose there is a paper of maybe G. R. Sinha. There is a paper of G. R. Sinha and some other authors, and that is published in some journal, some volume number, and some year. What we do? How do we do that? We normally write if the author, multiple authors are there. We will write Sinha et al. Maybe two zero one three. Sinha et al. Two zero one three discussed. Sinha et al. Two zero one three implemented. Sinha et al. Two zero one three introduced, suggested like this. We cite the reference and. Uh, normally reference has some reference number so whenever we end this particular paragraph we can write one two or three whatever is the number of that particular research paper so this is what do we write in introduction general purpose theory about that particular topic related research is the most important component of any research paper why it is most important component because it presents you the mirror mirror about what what others have done How many research papers you have studied in the references, and what other researchers have done? What the findings they have achieved? What are their findings? What are their limitations? What are their advantages and disadvantages? This you normally include in the related research, which we call as literature survey or literature review. This presents, this gives you the 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 scope of your work. That these are the findings which have been achieved by. the present researchers and there is a scope of improvement in these parameters that you try to find out using related research and after that you go to method what about the method method also may be taken from the the general purpose or existing methods but you have to propose something of your own something new of your own some modification or some your own method you can present here and that method has to be described well Along with maybe algorithm, data flow diagram, whatever you want to present, along with the theoretical concept that is explained inside the method, the results and discussion. This method is implemented by your own. Then you get some result. Explain those results that you write in the discussion part, and after that you conclude. You draw the conclusions that what are the new findings which you have achieved, and what are the new findings, and where do your new findings, where do your results stand? In comparison with what others have, what others have achieved, that you will put in the conclusions. And sometimes in hypothesis, you claim that this I am going to achieve, but some portion you are not able to achieve. That you include in future scope also, future work, uh, future scope of your work. That is also mentioned in our conclusions. Then you write the references. I tell you, these are the general purpose stages and components of any research paper. you just collect some relevant 20 30 35 paper study those papers very carefully try to find out their finding major findings and limitations and try to address some of the challenges and limitations of the new paper the recent paper which has been contributed by the previous author this is expected in the research paper and this is how we can write a research paper on any topic so which are the important components the important components are the most important component is related research from where we should start then we should go for method and result and discussion then we will discuss about conclusion we will draw certain conclusions and i think after summing up all these things you will be you will be in a position to write an abstract of that research paper so i hope the researchers the students the scholars who are who are finding some difficulty in writing research paper they will have some ease in writing research paper if they follow these simple steps thank you